One of the most asked questions I get is how do you rig your camera overhead for doing flat lay food photos? That's a great question. Let me show you. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, food photographer. Welcome to my studio. Now I published a video in 2017 for how to mount a camera overhead for food photography using a C stand. And here we are five years later, I'm still using the C stand, but the adapter for mounting the camera has changed. And I have a couple best practices to help you make the most of this setup. So let's start by talking about the gear. So I'm using a C stand, C for century, and you can think of them like a super sturdy light stand. They're heavy duty and then the legs unfurl to give it extra support and balance. Now, the best way to position these is so that the longest leg is pointed toward the side where your lights or your camera, whatever is gonna be heavy that you're mounting to the C stand is positioned. This is gonna give you maximum stability. Now, one thing to note is that this is not a lightweight or a small piece of equipment. Granted, I have brought these with me on location to restaurant shoots, like if I'm gonna be doing a lot of overhead shooting or I'm gonna be there for more than a few hours. But if you're shooting in your kitchen or your living room and you wanna be able to easily stash your gear, well, this may not be then the best solution for you. Granted, before I built this studio, it was very normal for me to have C-stands in my kitchen, but you're gonna to have to make your own decisions around how comfortable are you with your kitchen if effectively turning into a photo studio. But the big reason that I opted for this over a tripod with an articulating arm is that this gave me more reach over my scenes and it's just something more solid for me to mount my camera to because I did start out using a tripod with an arm for a while, but the legs were always getting in the way and I wanted something that I could go a whole lot higher if I needed to. Now, you can definitely get hardcore and go with a Phoba stand or a salon stand but I'll be honest, for me personally, this has fit my needs perfectly and is great for a smaller studio. And two, it's a lot more affordable in comparison. So that central column with the legs, that is technically the C stand. And so then the next piece is the boom arm. And the kit that I have linked below comes with both the C stand and the boom arm. And that boom arm is attached via a grip head. And then you can see there's another grip head located right here. Now, as far as using the grip head, when we turn this handle right here, it opens it up, allowing you to thread different things through it. So if I turn this to the left, you can see that I can release that and it just has these different openings. To the right, it closes. To the left, it opens. We always remember righty tighty, lefty loosey. And so then that's where this piece comes into play. And this is also where you need to pay close attention because in the 2018 version of this video, I I used a different adapter to mount a monopod head, but I was starting to hear a lot of reports of inconsistent sizing as far as that adapter. And it's admittedly a bit of a trickier setup with a limited range of motion of the camera. And so then a couple months ago, after five years of use and abuse, that adapter, it finally snapped and I needed to replace it. Well, Manfrotto has since come out with this particular device, which I found on B&H, which is a double ball joint head and then it has a camera platform attached, which I'm specifically mentioning Manfrotto because this is gonna be a lot easier for you if you keep your tripods and the camera mount for your overhead camera the universal. So that if you use a Manfrotto tripod like I use, the plate that inserts and secures into this platform is the same plate that works with my tripod. Now, if you wanna learn more about tripods, you can check out my video link down below, but it's really nice that the head on my tripod and this platform here on my overhead mount take the same exact plate so that I can move seamlessly from the camera overhead to the tripod without having to change out the plate on the camera. I can easily move between the two. But so what do you do if you don't have a Manfrotto and you're using a different brand? Well, I recommend reaching out to your favorite gear retailer. Like I love to connect with the customer service chat over at bhphotovideo.com and I get their specific recommendations for my unique needs and they can definitely steer you in the right direction. This is not sponsored. I've just sent lots of money to B&H over the years and I always trust them with my gear purchases. So to connect this adapter to our C-stand, all we need to do is again, Lefty Lucy is gonna open up that grip head and we see we have these different openings right here. We can just take this little metal piece right here, insert it into one of those openings 
and then turn this to the right really firmly so that it's really nice and secure, that it's not going anywhere, right? If we're gonna be mounting our camera to this, we wanna make sure that it is secured. So then to mount the camera, I have my tripod plate attached to my camera. Again, this is the same exact plate that my tripod head takes, so I can move seamlessly from the tripod to the overhead. And you can see that we have the opening right here. So then I just slide this into place until that little arm comes down, it clicks. I move that little gold lever there to make sure everything is secure. And now my camera is mounted overhead. I'm gonna do that one more time just from a different perspective because I know it always helps to be able to see things from multiple perspectives. So again, tripod plate. We insert this into the opening. We see how that lever came down, little gold piece. Switch that down, ensuring that our camera is nice and secured. Now, one of the additional features with this particular setup is we have this nifty little handle here, which if we move it to the left, lefty loosey, righty tighty, we move it to the left, suddenly it releases this double ball. See, we've got the two right there, the joint, it releases it. So now we can reposition the camera in any sort of additional configuration we want. If say, for example, you know, here, maybe I am oriented in the vertical perspective, right? I'm getting a vertical orientation of my images. Well, what if I want to swap to a horizontal orientation? All I have to do is release the ball joint and then push the handle back in righty tighty. So now I am in the horizontal orientation or I can flip it, turn it around to the other side. You can see I'm horizontal that way, or we can come at it from an angle. We can reposition this into all sorts of angles and position, whereas my previous adapter, I could just kind of flip between the horizontal and vertical. This is that much more flexible. So just to demo that one more time, we pull this little lever to the left, lefty loosey, and then I can position it how I want and push it back away from myself or to the right. And now it's nice and secured. Again, make sure everything's really secure at all of the necessary points when you're doing a setup like this. I don't want your camera falling. And now a question that comes up a lot with this setup or whenever we're talking about flat lays is how do I know my camera is actually level? Well, that's where this nifty little hot shoe spirit level comes into play. We can just insert that right into the hot shoe of the camera and I can already see we have these little bubbles here. We just reposition the camera until we ensure that those bubbles are right in the center and we're perfectly level. Now, one other point as it relates to stability is that it is a really good idea to use sandbags as a counterweight for the leg of the C-stand. Now granted, my mirrorless camera is fairly lightweight and the stand is heavy enough on its own to not topple over, but of course, if in doubt, safety first, you're gonna sandbag it. Now, while we're on the topic of stability, especially if you're shooting video, is that I'm gonna recommend that you keep that boom arm fairly centered in relationship to the C-stand. Because if I come in here and release this arm and pull it way, way out, it's gonna be a lot less stable and more susceptible to shaky footage, which can be especially problematic if you're shooting video and you don't want things all shaky and all over the place. But also when I'm shooting video, if I have touched the camera just like I did, I'm gonna give it at least five seconds or so to allow that shaking action to calm down just to again make sure that all the shaking has subsided and I have a really nice still camera. Like I mentioned any of this equipment or gear that you're curious about you can find links to it down below along with links to all the gear that I use as a food photographer. But with that thank you so much for stopping by the studio. I hope you have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you again soon okay bye. Da -da -da. This is me just getting a still frame for the thumbnail. <laughs> Not awkward at all. <laughs>